an underwater garden, bursting with color. Scientists call this coral bed the field of roses. Stretching nearly three kilometers off the coast of Tahiti, it's one of the largest of its kind. So now we will do our first dive along the reef of roses to see how deep they go. We're going to an unexplored world to explore the unexplored. It's quite motivating and exhilarating. Coral reefs like this are hard to find. Anything below 30 meters is called the twilight zone, an area low in oxygen and difficult to reach. But rare living walls like this keep drawing scientists down. Other famous coral, like the Great Barrier Reef off Australia, have been bleached by harmful human waste and rising sea temperatures. The marine life around them is suffering and disappearing too. But scientists are surprised by the condition of this particular garden, seemingly unaffected by pollution. It's pristine. This is looking awfully good. So I, I, I think it has managed to dodge the bullet, but you know, the question is how long is it going to be before we get an event that's that deep in that location and, uh, and it suffers the same fate. Until then, this underwater labyrinth is blooming with hope. Leah Harding, Al Jazeera. OK, let's talk to Julian Barbier. He's head of marine policy and regional coordination for UNESCO. He joins us from Paris. Julian, welcome to the news hour. What is it that's unique about this particular area that it's managed to avoid being impacted by all the negatives that we are making and putting into our oceans? Well, I mean, first of all, I think it's a, it's a great positive story about the state of our coral reefs. You know, we've, we've heard in the last uh, year only that you know, since the 1950s, we've lost about 50% of our coral reef uh, cover globally. So finding a, a, a reef structure which is so extensive uh, at the depth which we don't usually find or expect to find uh, this kind of structure is quite amazing. The fact that uh, indeed, as your, your, your reporter said, uh, you know, the reef is in a very good and, and healthy uh, condition. It's been able to dodge the impact of, uh, of climate change, of, of, of pollution and, and, and overfishing, which are the main uh, coral reef killers. But it also opens up uh, the fact that, you know, maybe we're not looking in the right places to find some of those reefs. And, you know, we have very little of our ocean, which is actually mapped in high resolution. We only have about 20% of our ocean seafloor globally, which has been mapped. And when you think that this information is really the basis for ocean management, for protecting biodiversity, uh, that tells us that we need to invest much more in, in the science, in, in finding out where those ecosystems uh, might be, where we're not certainly looking for them. But also we need to make sure that they are well conserved in the future. That's an astonishing statistic that we've only mapped 20% of our oceans. That means we've mapped more of the surface of the moon than we have the waterways on our own planet. But very briefly, because we are running out of time, what, what's the lesson that we can take away from this and what can we learn from it? Well, I think we can certainly learn that uh, we need to study those reefs. And, and even though coral reefs are, are probably one of the most studied ecosystem, uh, there's a lot of things we still don't know. And I think coming up with a understanding what type of biodiversity lives on those, those coral reefs will be very important. Uh, we, we anticipate that there are still many, many species that can be found. And when you look at the uh, so for those, those systems, whether in terms of providing potential new cure, new medicines, uh, I think it, we need to invest much more in, in, in finding out where they are and protecting them through, uh, through measures. And this is what UNESCO is trying to do with World Marine Heritage Sites and Biosphere Reserves, so that countries have a tool to, uh, to protect and, and sustain those ecosystems in, in the long term and for future generations. OK, thank you so much for joining us here on the news. Uh, Julian Barbier there talking to us from Paris. Pleasure.